Hi everyone, this is Lynn and welcome back to the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel. Today I'm featuring the Dream Big stamp set that was released during the Meraki Cheer in March. And isn't this just a gorgeous stamp set? When there was the YouTube hub to celebrate this new release, I used some distressings and rainbow colors to create a rainbow wreath. But today, especially for you, I am stepping outside of my comfort zone and I decided to try to color these flowers in. Now, just because this is outside of my comfort zone and I am not capable currently to create a flower as beautiful as they are in reality, I decided to go with quite a dark blue color to color these flowers in. I am focusing my darker markers in the center of these leaves and then I am blending it out towards the edges with my lighter markers. Now today's card, as you saw in the beginning, is a mix of blue and yellows. These colors are going so well together. Um, they reinforce each other in a way that I cannot describe. Um, and I just thought that this was a good way to try to have a go with these flowers. Now, as I said, there are many ways to use this stamp set and there are so many inspirations out there by the design team, by all of you. And I just love each and every card that I see passing by with this amazing Dream Big stamp set. Now, once I colored all of these in, I used the matching dies to cut them out. And I will admit that the coloring is uh, quite repetitive since I'm using the same color combination. And I'm trying to stick to this same sort of shadowing on each of the flowers. Then I will also color one of the butterflies in. And the other one I will later on use to just add a bit of dimension to my butterfly. And then for the rest, I am using the same colors. The center of the flowers will be in yellow that I'm also using on the butterfly. So quite clean and simple, although there is quite a lot happening. A way to keep things clean and simple for me is to reuse the same combinations of colors all over the card. So that's why I decided for myself to keep everything with this blue and then the yellows. And for the rest, this card will be quite white. Uh, just to really let these images stand out with this burst of color on the rest of the card. So as you can see here, I'm doing exactly the same, but I'm showing it however. I am going to color only each image once and then off camera I also colored the other flowers. I needed more, uh, that's also why I just already stamped them out uh, in case uh, and in the end, I really, really need them to fill this card completely. So here, going over it a second time, I am using Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper. I said it in the past already, I love this paper for Copic markers. They allow you, well, the paper allows you to add quite a lot of layers without the issue of the bleeding immediately. Um, and I think that... The end result is quite bright of the markers, which I really, really love. There are papers that have issues with bleeding, that the paper is getting quite quickly oversaturated, and that makes it a bit difficult to sometimes get the blend that you want. So that's the solution here. And there are other papers that are as good as this paper to get that blend that you want, but not every paper is as bright or as muted, depending on which uh, end result you prefer. Uh, so I ended up with Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper and I have never parted since. So <laughs> I'm really happy about the paper. And then of course the coloring as I always do is color from darkest to lightest. Um, something that I can recommend is when you're not sure about your shadowing or how much to add, go in there with a limited amount of your darkest marker and with the second layer you can definitely go further if you think that there isn't enough of that dark marker. It's harder to get rid of a dark color than to add. So that's why I tend to go easy in the beginning and if I see while doing the blend with the lighter markers that I have a lot of the light color on top of my images, I just go in a second time with way more of the darkest color. So for the butterfly, I decided to use yellows, but something that I really like whenever I'm doing 
some coloring with yellows is to have some yellow red markers to help me really get some depth and more contrast in my combination. So that's what I did here. And then I'm just trying to variate in the uh, transitions all over the butterfly to really let all of those yellows stand out even though I'm only using a limited amount of markers. If at a certain point you're curious about this marker combination and you don't want to re-watch the whole video, of course you can skip a bit of the video, but there is also a blog post where I'm linking towards in the description box. Uh, so that's easy for you as well for reference. So don't forget a second layer. You don't have to and depending on how big your image is, it's definitely not always necessary. But I tend to do it, however, um, even though here the images or the, the elements of the butterfly are quite small, I'm still going in there with a second layer. It just depends. Sometimes you need three or four or five layers. Uh, you just keep going until you're happy with the end result, of course. Um, that's what it's all about. I also contemplated in the beginning to leave the centers of the flowers wide because as it is, I really like it. But then since I did this butterfly with the yellows, there was just no cohesion between my images, although these two colors reinforce each other really, really pretty. Um, so that's why I ended up adding that yellow to the centers as well to just have everything return a bit in my card as I said in the beginning. For me that's a way to keep it clean and simple. Although you might feature a lot of images, um, this is for me a way to do this. And again I'm not going to show the other coloring but I did exactly the same. Then I used the matching dyes and to just help me with my background I also took the Parisian Meraki Paradise. This dye is just incredible. So I laid my images out, tried a sentiment from this gorgeous stamp set and then I took my press and seal to lift up these flowers in the arrangement that I liked here. Now my card bases are not from Transitite Perfect Coloring Paper. So the white is slightly not the same white as my transotype, so that's why I have a piece of the Parisian Meraki Paradise, which isn't a complete piece, I just used a scrap piece of paper that was white enough. And then I also took another piece of white paper from transotype to add to the other part of my card base, just to cover up the white of my card base, as it is not exactly the same. You don't need to, but for me personally, it really makes a difference. So I just added a piece of paper, I'm trimming off the excess. I'm really bad at trimming things exactly to size, so whenever I can, I just add a panel bigger than needed and I just trim off the excess. And this way, it's perfectly the size of my card base. Now next up I'm going to stamp out the sentiment, therefore I'm taking my Misty, this way I can stamp it multiple times and have it each time at exactly the same place. So I'm doing that, um, also my ink pad wasn't saturated enough so I had to stamp it multiple times, in the meanwhile I have added some ink on top of that, so that's fixed now. And then it was time to add my piece of the Parisian Meraki Paradise that I die cut. I don't need it completely, again it's slightly bigger than my panel or than my card base just to make sure that I can trim off the excess and this way I have it perfectly on top of my card. I'm using score tape to adhere this panel. I have noticed in the past for me personally that with these gorgeous stitching details and the well, it's not even, if you get what I mean. It's better for me to use gore tape. It's a really strong adhesive. And I'm sure that it will stay on there without curling up, which I sometimes have with my adhesive rollers. Uh, so therefore, I'm really making sure that the back is completely covered with the foam tape. And then I will add it on the left side of my card. I'm going to use my Misty again, this is a tip that I see on many YouTubers, uh, their channels. Uh, I don't use it often, but it is definitely a really handy tip if you are struggling with getting things lined up. Just put it in a corner of your Misty and push that other panel right against the edge and press it down then. 
This way it is exactly aligned with your card base. Just checking, that worked, and then I'm going to trim off the excess. So then my background or my panel is ready. Uh, so if you're great at trimming things to size, you can prep this ahead uh, before adding everything to your card base, but this is really a help for me. So I added thin foam squares all over the back of the flowers, and now I'm going to add it to my card. Now to help me, I just put some purple tape underneath, well, in between my card base so that it wouldn't fold open every time, and I'm just adding those flowers. So now we have that gorgeous stitching details as a background detail on the left side and then the sentiment without any issues of stitching details on the right side. Now the butterfly, as I said, I had it stamped out twice, I die it twice and I just added them on top of each other. I bended the butterfly a bit so that I could only add a bit of score tape in the center of the butterfly and it will really be flying on my card. I slightly offset it of the card, which sort of elongates the whole design. And I tested it, it fits in my specific envelopes here, so it's easy for me to send out without any issues. Next up, I am adding some Rocky Sparkle. This is the Ebony Opal Gems. And can I just, can I just say that these gems are incredible? It's this dark color without being too dark because of all of the colors that are inside this gem. And I just think all of these gems are incredible. There are so many colors already out there at Crafty Maraki. So there is definitely a gem for every card that you're making. Now, sometimes I forget or I decide to not add any gems just to keep it more simple. Uh, but definitely there is so much choice. Um, I just love playing with them. Also, there are different sizes, which is something that I truly, truly love because I prefer adding several sizes next to each other. The moment that you have the same size, it can work, but sometimes it's a bit too much. And just having each step of this um, embellishment positioning in another size is for me key, and I just love that. Just using some liquid glue and getting all of them in place. And then we will finish off this card by using some glossy accents. You don't need to, I definitely think that here the card can stop. Um, it's done. But I decided to add some glossy accents in the center of the flowers as well as on the body of the butterfly. And that is my card. That's all it is. Uh, really simple, same colors, um, limited markers and just a whole lot of fun to create. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I could inspire you to maybe try something similar. Thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe to see all of the Crafty Meraki inspiration. And I'll be back soon. Bye!